Here I'd like to do an introduction to one-dimensional collisions. So collisions are an incredibly important uh, method of extracting information from the natural world. It, when physicists do experiments to understand uh, microscopic or beyond microscopic particles, things that we can't see with even microscopes or, or our uh, other sort of observational tools. We learn things usually by colliding them, either with each other, with other objects, colliding them with light, with photons. Collisions are uh, an incredibly important part of the, the scientific process. So we want to start a little bit about um, collisions in, in one dimension. And so it means we have, say, two, two objects, uh, some mass, one and, and mass two will have some velocity, initial velocity one, some uh, initial velocity for mass two. And these, these objects then are going to collide. They don't necessarily have to be going in opposite directions, but with different velocities they eventually make contact. So a collision has three stages. There's a before, which is before they make contact and they have these these initial conditions then there's some collision we'll call this the during phase it is uh and here there's some forces going on between them and uh this is very so some forces which we don't know some time which is very short and a lot of this is uh, completely unknown. We don't know, often we don't know what's going on here. We d know little information about it. And then we have sort of the after, where now you have mass one and mass two have some uh, final velocity for each of them. Okay, so a couple of things about this. Uh, first of all, remember we're we're in one dimension, which creates sort of a unique problem, which is uh, these are all vectors, but we never really refer to them that, them as that. Since we're only in one dimension, we deal with numbers where the the plus minus sign indicate the direction of the vector. Another way to think about it, we're just looking at the x components of the velocity and we just leave off the vector notation. But you can't ever forget that these are vectors and so when you're doing these collisions always establish a coordinate system so that you'll know uh, say for example if this is my positive x for this collision uh, initial velocity of 1 was positive in this coordinate system, initial velocity 2 was negative in this coordinate system. Always make sure that you establish your coordinate system and remember that these are vectors even when we don't have sort of the vector notation on every object. Okay, so, so back to this idea of collisions. We have this before, uh, during, and after. And the the magic of, of this sort of collision physics is that um, we often don't know or don't care what happens in the complicated during phase when they're colliding themselves. We have information about what happened, wh what their conditions were before, and we can use that in our conservation laws to determine what were the conditions of the, the, uh, the particles after. Okay, so what's, how can we do this? So the first thing that, that we often, um, say about this during so sort of that helps us helps us with this is that the uh, collision phase is very short which means we're always going to be working in the impulse approximation and so in the impulse approximation then momentum is conserved. So that's the one thing that we have going for us in these collisions that the momentum is conserved. Now, um, to know something about energy, that we don't have to know anything 
in particular about the types of forces that are going on internally. We just have to know that the impulses due to external forces are very small over the time of the collision, and that's almost always true. But now, let's go, if we go into the collision itself and know something about the forces, we want to ask, are they conservative or not? We may not know the size of the forces, their magnitudes, or how they're interacting, but if we can at least identify from the types of the forces that they're conservative forces, then we know that energy is conserved in the collision. Now, if energy is conserved in a collision, that's called elastic collision. So that's an important term to remember. Elastic collision means that energy is conserved. But that may not be true. We can conserve momentum, but if the, the forces involved, in fact, are not conservative, then we, uh, we, energy is not conserved. Okay, so in that case, if non-conservative forces, and, and when I see, when the forces I'm talking about here are the internal forces. The forces that are taking place uh, internally that the, the two objects exert on each other during the collision. Okay, so if non-conservative forces are acting, then uh, energy is not conserved and this is called an inelastic collision. Okay, so in an inelastic collision then uh, energy is lost from the system. So these are the, the two, in principle, the two different types of collisions uh, once we've conserved momentum. You either conserve m energy or you don't. And if you conserve energy, uh, it's elastic. If you don't conserve energy, which means you lose energy from the collision, that's inelastic. Now, I, do, I guess I do have to make a little bit of a, uh, uh, a, a key here, which is I'm, I'm not talking about collisions where you can convert other types of energy to gain energy. For example, if you collide two cars together and their gas tanks explode, you may have generated uh, more energy than you had initially due to the, the potential energy in the, in the, uh, the gasoline, etc. So I, I'm not talking about um, uh, those types of collisions. So these are inelastic collisions that can that can drain energy from the system. Okay, so there's one other special type of collision we want to talk about, and that is a uh, totally inelastic collision. So a totally inelastic collision between two objects has one very uh, obvious characteristic, which what that and and that is that the objects stick together. Now that's a, a very easy way to identify that you have a totally inelastic collision. You're given a problem where you have two objects, they collide and they stick together. That's a red flag. Ah, that's a totally inelastic collision. But it's not entirely obvious why this particular collision is so important. And the reason is this collision gives you maximum, and that's why it's called totally inelastic, maximum kinetic energy loss. In an inelastic collision, you lose the most kinetic energy that you possibly can. Now, and the way to see that is to look at a collision in the center of mass frame. So I have two objects, M1, V1, M2, V2. Okay, they, they're, if I'm the, by rest frame, I can see these two coming together. But now let's, let's move to a center of mass frame and transform and, and watch the same collision. Okay, initially, 
okay, both objects have some kinetic energy in the center mass frame. Oh, in the center mass frame, we have to, to do this transformation uh, to this new frame, and so there's a mass one. It has now some new velocity, u1, in the center of mass frame, and this has some new velocity, u2. It, I, and I'm not doing the transformation here, but it's a, it, we're, we're doing our uh, transformation between relative motion in, in, in relative frames, and so the, these two objects have new velocities in the center of mass frame. Okay, so initially, uh, there's some kinet this system has some kinetic energy, which is equal to one half m one u one squared plus one half m two u two squared. Okay, but after the collision, what happens? Well, if we say after the collision, they're stuck together. Okay. Well, where's the center of mass frame? Well, the center of mass frame is is right there. The center of mass has to be with the combined object, which is now essentially one object. The center of mass is now at the center of mass of one object. Well, the center of mass is not moving in the center of mass frame. So if the objects are stuck together at the origin of the center of mass, then the objects are not moving in the center of mass frame once they're stuck together. So that means after, so after, the kinetic energy is zero in the center of mass frame. And so I just did a transformation of coordinate systems. I didn't change anything physically about the system. And since you can't ever lose more kinetic energy, uh, you can't ever get negative kinetic energy, this is the maximum amount of kinetic energy that you can lose. And so that's the essence of a totally inelastic collision. The, it, you lose all of the kinetic energy that you have as measured in the center of mass frame. Okay, so, so collisions are a way that the study of collisions or way we're trying to determine what happens to systems after a collision giving information about their conditions before the collision knowing as little as possible about the interactions between them and we conserve momentum and energy is conserved if we have elastic. It's not conserved if we have inelastic. And then totally inelastic collisions, those where the objects stick together, leads us to our maximum kinetic energy loss.